now we are going to move to the difficult direction of the Chigger inequality, which is to show that the expansion of a graph is upper bounded by a function of the second smallest eigenvalue of the Laplacian matrix, specifically by the square root of uh, 2 times lambda 2. We are going to use the variational characterization of uh, lambda 2 as the minimum over all uh, vectors that are orthogonal to the all one vector. That's the same as saying that the entry is sum to zero of the real quotient of the vector, where the real quotient of a vector is the summation uh, over all edges of the difference of the value that the vector gives to the two endpoints of the edge squared divided by the degree of the graph times the um, norm 2 squared of the vector. Last week, we proved that if lambda k is 0, then the graph must have k connected components or more. In particular, if lambda 2 is 0, the graph must be disconnected. So let's see how this special case works out. How do you argue that if lambda 2 is 0, then the graph must be disconnected? Well, if lambda 2 is 0, um, and x is a minimizer in uh, this expression, so x is some vector for which the real quotient of x is 0, which means that this difference is 0 for every edge, which means that if two vertices are uh, connected by a path, the value of x must be the same at both vertices, which means that the vector x must be constant within each kinetic component. On the other hand, the summation of the entries of the vector is 0, which means that the vector must have both positive and uh, negative entries. So if you just look at the set of vertices, such that the corresponding entry in the vector is uh, smaller than or equal to 0, and the complement, the set of vertices such that the corresponding entry in the vector is positive, those two sets of vertices cannot have any um, edge going between them. They must be disconnected from each other. And so that shows that the graph must be disconnected. Now what we want to do is a sort of uh, approximate version of this argument. Something that says that if lambda 2 is small, then there must be some vector whose really quotient is small, which must be a vector such that for the typical edge, the difference of the value of the vector at the endpoints of the edge must be small. Now let's think of this as being an embedding of the vertices of the graph on the line, some way to associate every vertex to some uh, real number. This is saying that endpoints of edges tend to be close to each other. So there should be some way of uh, uh, cutting the graph or separating the vertices into two subsets just by taking some cutoff on this embedding in the real line, such that not too many edges will cut across. And this is what we're going to show. That for every vector whose entry is sum to 0, it's always possible to find some threshold value, such that if we divide the vertices according to which vertices have the corresponding entry in the vector smaller than t, and which vertices have the corresponding entry in the vector bigger than t, then both those two sets will have expansion smaller than square root of twice the real quotient. So one of those two must contain at most n over 2 vertices, and so that will prove that the, the expansion of the graph is at most the square root of 2 times the real quotient of x. Now apply this fact to the x that minimizes this expression, and here you can put lambda 2 in place of uh, r of x, and so this will show that there is a subset of vertices in the graph containing at most n over 2 vertices, and having expansion at most square root of 2 lambda 2. So the graph will have expansion at most square root of 2 lambda 2. So this leads to the following algorithm for finding non-expanding sets in graphs. At least in the regular case, we will see later how to generalize that to arbitrary undirected graphs. So take an input, a d-regular graph, compute an eigenvector of lambda 2, maybe approximately, and then sort the vertices according to the value that the corresponding entry has in the vector. Recall that an eigenvector is a vector that has one entry for each vertex of the graph. So it's assigning a real number to every vertex of the graph. So you can use those real numbers as keys 
to sort the vertices. So do that, call the vertices v1 through vn so that the corresponding entries of the vector are increasing. And then look at all the cuts, all the partitions of uh, vertices into two subsets that you can get by taking an initial segment of the sorted sequence and then the remaining vertices. And find the one of those n minus 2 cuts that has minimal expansion and then return it. So one observation is that this algorithm can be implemented very efficiently. We have n steps in which we are trying all possible cuts of this form. And it seems in each step we need to compute what is the number of uh, edges with one endpoint in the vertices v1 through vk and one endpoint in the vertices vk plus 1 through vn. But notice that if you have already computed this number of vertices for the previous value of k, now you want to recompute it for the next value of k. All you need to know is how many edges the vertex vk plus 1 has going through v1 through vk and how many edges it has going through vk plus 2 up to vn. Because then the new number of edges will be equal to the previous number of uh, edges minus the number of edges going from vk plus 1 through v1 through vk plus the number of edges going from vk plus 1 through vk plus 2 through vn. So if you keep track of what was the previous number of edges, the number of edges in the previous iteration, to update and find out what's the number of edges at the next iteration, the running time is just equal to the degree of the vertex. So each step can be implemented in order of d time. There are n steps, so the total running time is order of uh, n times d, so the number of edges. And then you have v log v time to sort over here. So it's a really efficient algorithm. And by the analysis that we will um, see now, the expansion of the set found by the algorithm is at most the square root of 2 lambda 2, which is, by the easy direction of Chigger inequality, at most the square root of uh, 4 times uh, the expansion of G. This algorithm works well in practice, and it's very fast, and uh, it usually comes up with good solutions. Let's see a couple of examples of uh, how this algorithm would run. Suppose our input e graph is a cycle. Then the sorting order of the vertices of the cycle, according to the label given to the vertices by the eigenvector of lambda 2, will be the same order in which you see those vertices going left to right. In fact, in this drawing, the x coordinate of those vertices is precisely the value that they get in the eigenvector of lambda 2. Actually, the y-coordinate is the value that they get in the eigenvector of lambda 3. That's what's called the spectral drawing of the graph. But anyway, the algorithm will look at all cuts that you can get as vertical cuts in uh, this drawing, and we'll pick the one with the best expansion, which will uh, end up being uh, this cut, which is actually optimal. Let's see an example where the algorithm does not work so well. We've already seen the Peterson graph, in this drawing, the, again, the x-axis of uh, the vertices is the label that they get in the eigenvector of lambda 2, and the y-axis is the value that they get in the eigenvector of lambda 3. So the algorithm will uh, look at the vertices in the order in which they come here left to right. So we'll consider only two possible cuts, this cut and uh, this cut and the one with smallest expansion is this cut. So here in this cut, there are going to be four vertices over here and uh, six vertices over here. And the number of uh, edges going across is one, two, three, four, five, these are two edges, and uh, six. So the expansion of this cut will be the number of edges going across divided by the small side of the cut times the degree. So this will be a half. And this will correspond to this cut in the graph. So these are these four vertices and uh, these are uh, these six vertices. And this is not optimal because the optimal cut has expansion one third as we saw the other time. That's the cut that separates the inner five vertices from the outer five vertices. So this is what we're going to show now that for every regular graph and for every vector whose entry is sum to zero, there is a cut 
they can be derived by picking a threshold and then separating the vertices according to those that are labeled smaller than a threshold by the eigenvector x. Actually, the vector x doesn't need to be an eigenvector. And the vertices that, that are labeled bigger than t by the vector x. So this is the expansion of this cut, where we normalize by the smaller of the two sides of the cut. We want to show that this is at most the square root of twice the real quotient of x. Before jumping into the proof of this lemma, we're going to modify the vector x a little bit. So if we use this notation for the median of x, which would be the element that comes in uh, position n over 2 rounded up if we sorted the vector. So this would be x sub n2 if uh, the vector was in sorted order. So this would be our definition of median. Now define a new vector that is the same as x, except that we subtract the median of x from every coordinate. So then this new vector, once you sort it, you're going to get the same sorted order as if you had sorted x, because it's just the same vector except that it is a shift, but the relationship of uh, which entry is bigger than or smaller than which other entry remains the same. Because of this shift, the median of y is 0, and this is the non-trivial observation. This shift can only decrease the Rayleigh really quotient. So let's see why. Let's compute the Rayleigh really quotient of this new vector. When we look at the numerator of the Rayleigh really quotient, we get the same as the numerator of the Rayleigh really quotient of x. Because in each of those differences, what we have is yu will be xu minus the median of x. This will be minus xv plus the median of x. So just xu minus xv and the, the two shifts cancel out. Now let's look at the denominator. Right? So what is summation over v of uh, yv square? So this will be summation over v of uh, xv square. Then there will be minus 2 summation over v of uh, xv times uh, the median. And then there will be plus summation over v of uh, median squared. But now here, this summation over v of uh, xv is 0, because we are working with a vector x whose entries sum to 0. So we just have summation over v of xv squared, and then this n times the median of x. So how does it compare to the really quotient of x? We have the same numerator. And here in the denominator, it's the same denominator plus some additional positive quantity. So this can only decrease the ratio. So this is only smaller than the really quotient of x. Another way of thinking about it is that y is equal to x minus a vector that is orthogonal to x. Because this is parallel to the old one vector, and the old one vector is orthogonal to x. This is the length square y, so you can uh, look at it this way. If this is x, if this is the vector minus the median of x, minus the median of x, and this is y, this is a right angle triangle because x and this vector are orthogonal. Now here we're looking, what is the square of the length of x. Well, by Pythagoras' theorem, it will be the square of the length of x plus the square of the length of this vector. And what is it? It's the summation of the square of the, the squares of the entries, and so it will be n times uh, the, medium, the median squared. It will be easier to work with y than with x, because this property of the median being 0, as we will see in a moment, will be quite helpful.